Hey headphone people, welcome back to the channel and got a fun review for you today and kind of some hacking going on. Now I can't take credit for this because what we're gonna do today is we are going to take the FIO UTWS fives here and we are going to go wireless with things like the Focal Alex, things like the HE1000 V2 and of course some IEM. So we'll talk about how these things sound and how it works and how you can adapt it to do all sorts of different little things actually. I can't take credit for this idea. This was a Zeos thing that I totally ripped off and wanted to try, mainly because I was trying to find like, I was trying to turn my Alex into a wireless solution. Then I was thinking, well, maybe the Alex and Legia could be Bluetooth, like the best Bluetooth headphones ever, etc. So does it work? Let's talk about it. Okay, so the FIO UTWS5. There was a previous gen, a UTWS3. This is the latest version. It's a little more powerful. Um, you can see it comes with a pretty decent size case here, right? You can see like, here's the Mojo for comparison. Here's the BTR5 for comparison. Here is my Sony uh, XM4s for comparison. So it's got a chunky case, right? Which makes sense. But what's cool about this is there's actually space in here so you can hook your IEMs up and then you can just leave them in the case. So most IEMs are gonna fit on here. Now, you can get these in two different versions, right? You can get the MMCX version, which I got, or you can get a two pin version. Now what's, what's cool is the other thing you can get, and I will link this down below, the other thing you can get are these little adapters, right? So this is uh, one audio, I believe is what it's called, and, and it's a MMCX two two pin adapter. So I honestly wanted a two pin one, but these things are hard to find right now. So I just settled for MMCX and then got the adapters for it. I have had zero issue using these adapters with anything I've tried them with. The only issue that I've come across with these as far as fitment goes is with these MMCX connectors, they did not work with the Sennheiser IE300 because it is just a little bit too thick right at this part and they couldn't get in those deep enough. So that was unfortunate. So if you're buying or you want to use something like the UTWS5, with the Sennheiser IE300s, or I imagine the IE600, or I imagine the IE900, then you're probably gonna wanna get the two pin version of this and then get a two pin to MMCX adapter is probably what you'd need to do, okay? Now, let's take it a step further. So what we do here, right, is we just clip these MMCX connectors on like this, no problem, and then we can connect this guy like right into and IEM. These are the Triptown Leas, which I just did a review for and really like these guys for a budget IEM. And then you can flip them right on and it kind of just loops behind your ear. And so you've got a pretty sleek little solution there if you want to try out um, like some different IEMs. Now it's not, is it as simple and sleek as like a true wireless system? No, definitely not but you can get IEMs that are a little more low profile. You will have, you know, this piece hanging off the back of your ear. I personally don't mind it a whole lot, um, even with glasses, but I could see how it would be annoying for some people. They really don't weigh much at all. They're, they're pretty hard to notice, honestly, if they're on there. So again, um, it's, it's a pretty simple fit. It's not, it's honestly not as intrusive as it looks to be perfectly honest with you now. Me personally, I still prefer just like the regular IEM cables, I think are more comfortable with regular IEMs than something like a true wireless. So just right for reference, here's an XM4 and you can see it sticks out of my ear like a little bit more and it just feels like there's more there. Um, but every IEM is gonna be a little bit different, right? So I'm just saying this is a viable solution that is convenient and you really don't notice the weight all that much or at least I didn't. Okay, so now we can take this even a step further, right? So what I've got here are a couple of MMCX to 3.5 connectors. And we can stick these guys on here just like this. 
and like this. Okay, so it looks like that. I'll note, you know, right, even with these on here, they still fit in the case just fine, which is convenient. But now we can take these guys and we pop them in the Alex here, right? So we're gonna take them and we're just gonna stick them right in there like that. And stick them right in there like that. Okay, now. So now I have like a fully functioning Bluetooth Alex, um, wireless Bluetooth Alex. Now you got them, they kind of dangle along here and they scratch on that. But what I found is I just curl them back so they sit like this and then they don't make a sound. And this actually works better than you'd probably expect it to, to be honest with you. Like it does not sound bad. And especially if you're thinking about like the convenience factor of like being totally wire free, this works. Like it works and it works fine. I have had zero issues with like connectivity or anything with these guys. You open up the case, they pair instantly. If you're doing something like this, like they're already paired and on by the time you get them working. I've tried them, um, you know, with the IEMs. I've tried them with just one, you know, just the left one, just the right one. It always works just fine. I haven't had any issue with the button presses on them at all. Like all of it just works. And um, let me tell you, like the battery life on this is not bad either. I think I've been using these for like weeks and I think I've charged them maybe two or three times like charged the case up actually. Um, so I've used them quite a bit and uh, the battery seems pretty legit to me. So um, what do we wanna talk about here? Well, let me show you one other crazy connector I did uh, just for fun and then we'll start talking about sound, right? So here's my really obscene connection is now we're going to take a 3.5 to 2.5 and stick it on there so that's our setup and now i can go wireless with my he 1000 v2s and so again we just pop these guys in here And we pop it in right here. And kind of same same thing as with the Alex. You gotta kind of fiddle with them to get them, you know, where you want them so they don't bother you and don't make sounds. But um, again, it's a viable, it's a viable option. It's not elegant, <laughs> but it works. It works, okay? So does it, how does it sound, right? This is what we want to know. It, you know, I'm listening to it right now. Is it perfect? No. But it's adequate, right? If you understand, like, just understand that you have to make some sound quality concessions when you're doing something like this, right? Like, it's not going to be perfect. It's not going to sound as good as a desktop stack, right? It's certainly not gonna sound as good as like my main desktop setup, which is worth like a couple thousand dollars at this point, right? It's not even, in my opinion, gonna sound as good as like the BTR5 does, okay? But it works, right? It works as long as your headphones aren't super demanding, right? The Alex, the HE1000, it drives them. It drives them to adequate listening levels with an adequate amount of sound quality as long as your expectations are within reason, right? I, I personally, like I said, I still think for, for a package of like convenience and sound quality, I still think the X-Can is my favorite pick for something like this. Um, I, but I still think like even the BTR5 has better sound quality than the, you know, this little wireless system here. But, all things considered, it looks goofy, but it is a viable option and they are nifty, handy little devices that you can play around with if you want to. Now, price to performance, right? Uh, again, the BTR5 is gonna be something that I feel like is a little bit better price to performance for this, um, especially if you factor in all the adapters that I've had to kind of pay for, which, you know, some of them were pretty expensive, like the MMCX to 3.5 and even the MMCX to 
uh, the two pin, right? I think all in, I probably got, you know, 60 bucks worth of adapters here to get all this different stuff to work. Um, add that to the cost of the UTWS5, which is what, like 120, $130 if you can get it. And you're looking at like a $200 solution here, which you're not really getting $200 sound quality. Like I said that you can buy an X can for 200 bucks easy and that's gonna blow these things out of the water sound quality wise, in my opinion. Um, but again, you're making some concessions for the convenience. All right, so what are you gonna get with improvement if you get something like an X can versus this? Well. You're gonna get a bump in overall clarity, overall definition. You're gonna get much better spatial, informa spatial information, um, imaging, just all, just pretty much across the board, just better in every category. That is not to say that the UTWS5 sound bad. They just aren't as refined sounding as you know something that's a little more solid and has a little more space, as you would imagine, as you would imagine. So. Um, the one thing that I want you to know, because this is what my experience was when I tried to drive the Alex with them for the first time, you do have to get into the app and change the volume level on the UTWS5 because it comes pr at a pretty timid level. And so let me sh let me just show you real quick how to do that, okay? So I'm just gonna jump into my app here. Um, the FIO app is not great, right? It, uh, I, I've had lots of issues with it as I've tried to do it. Like, but I did eventually get it to work. I maybe had to uninstall it a couple times, restart it a couple of times. We'll see if it connects right here. It might not, right? See, it's, it's trying to connect. It's not working. It's a finicky freaking app, okay? Let me see if I can get it working and I'll show you what you need to do. Okay, we got in there. Again, kind of finicky, all right? So here's what we're gonna look for in this. You can see you can change like button functions and all this stuff in here. That's that's cool, like there is some functionality here, but it's not worth, worth it for me. Power shutdown, indicator lights, battery protection, you got all this stuff on here, right? Okay, what we wanna do is go to audio, and this is what you wanna crank up right here see if you, we can get this a little bit better earbud volume right we can crank that all the way up now once it's cranked once it's cranked all the way up um, you can still control it with your phone right you control the audio the the volume levels with your phone and it's just it's fine after that but you do need to go in here and change that setting in order to get that volume maximum. And you especially need to do that. You might not need to do that if you're just doing IEMs, but if you're gonna try to drive full-size headphones at all, this is a must do, okay? Personally, the app, right, once I got it set up, I did not mess with it at all, okay? So it's a finicky app. If you've ever tried to use Fio's app with any of their stuff, it's usually pretty finicky but it's kind of a set it and forget it thing. At least that's how I treated it, right? So in conclusion, right? This is a viable solution for easy to drive full size headphones and for IEMs. If you're willing to sacrifice a little bit of sound quality for the convenience of it. I had zero issues with this working, okay? That being said, I still think for me, I'm just going to stick with the X can for my portable system. Just, I think it packs the right amount of convenience and sound quality into an affordable price. Okay. That's not to say that some people wouldn't go this way. I could see people going this way. I could see if I was more of an IEM user going this way, but I'm not, I'm more of a full size headphone user. So for me, it's the X can, but this is a viable option. And so is all of this adapting stuff, like it works, okay? So I will link to um, the adapters and all that stuff in the description. Um, hopefully you thought this was, you know, interesting, if not useful. And you know, have you tried these? Have you been able to get them? Cause they're still pretty hard to get. Um, I'd order mine from AliExpress. Um, so I, they're still not available on Amazon or anything as far as I can tell. So. 
still a little bit difficult to get your hands on, but I will link to them in a couple different places down below so you can try to find them and see when they get in stock. Uh, yeah, as always, thank you for your time. I appreciate you being with me. And you know, if you're into this kind of stuff, consider subscribing to the channel and uh, hopefully I'll see you in the next one.